Well, what brought me to the decision, my husband and I have been talking over the last year, uh, and we're healthy right now. And um, I thought first said, you know, I've been doing the schedule 24-7 for 28 years, and I thought, no, I haven't. I've been doing it for 43 because a coach has that same schedule, and I was a coach. So 24-7, 365, you plan your events around your job in the university. So for 43 years, we've done that. Family events, everything has been planned around whether we had ball games or what we were going to do. And we're not going to Thanksgiving here because we're going with the team on this trip. And a time has come where we've got other things we want to do. We want to spend time with family and friends that maybe aren't as local. And uh, uh, so we had decided we were going to do this. Now, I will admit I was not going to make the announcement until March. Uh, but I decided to hasten that and go ahead and do it and then just let the last six months be do my job as well as I could. When did you make this decision? You said that you, know, you planned on it, but originally we're going to plan to make the announcement in March. My husband and I last summer is when we finalized it and just said, you know what, we're taking a walk in our neighborhood. We, we live at Lake Norman and we're taking a walk. And I said, people have always told me, you'll know when it's time, you'll feel it. And I said, I'm feeling it. I think that scared him a little bit, honestly. Talking about it is one thing. Setting a timeline is different. And uh, I'm kind of hyper and, you know, I'm a type A personality. And so he's probably a little worried about that. He's been retired for a long time. Uh, so, but we're looking forward to spending that time together. Well, I think it's always hurtful when people say things about you. Some may be true in their eyes. Some may not be true, but it's hurtful. I appreciate the passion that the fans have. Uh, maybe channeling it in a little different way would have made it less hurtful, but um, you know, you want passionate fans. Uh, the, the memories are going to be the student athletes, the people at this university, the staff, my staff, our staff. Never felt like they worked for me, but with me, and uh, just incredible people. Our supporters, our fans, and that's one of the things I'm proudest of is the infrastructure that our staff has put in place. Um, when I first started here, we, had, we were in Belk Gym, and that's where we were, everything was. We didn't have a track. We didn't have baseball facilities like we have. We didn't have, we spent over $100 million that we've raised on facilities. So the infrastructure is in place, and so I'm, I'm probably proudest of that the infrastructure piece of it. And along with that goes in the different conferences we've been in and how we've worked hard to make that happen to position ourselves. And then adding football, and the reason, of course, I wanted to add football were multiple reasons, but was it, it was to protect the rest of our program. It was obvious that across the country, if you didn't have football, all decisions about conference affiliation were being made because of football. We needed football to remain credible. We'd spent a lot of money on all these facilities to be in a good conference, but we also needed to have the one thing that was missing, and that was to have football. The people and the student athletes and their stories. To me, oftentimes that gets lost. We have multiple stories, and, and some have been reported over the years of a student athlete that comes in, first generation coming to college. Um, long shot, going to need a lot of support, a lot of help. Uh, come in troubled at times. But if we give them the proper support and help, they don't always all make it, but the majority do. And they go from a lifestyle that's been totally different than many of us here have experienced to having a chance in life and to becoming a good citizen and giving back. And, and there are some incredible stories uh, that I wish we could share because those are the feel-good stories and that's why we do what we do. Well, I hope they've been good trails, okay? Uh, and uh, um, I've tried to be a mentor to young people, some locally and certainly some throughout the NCAA and NACTA, which is the National Athletic Directors Association. And I've always felt that I had great mentors. Uh, and when I first was named athletic director, I was only the third in the country, and I didn't know the other two. They were on the West Coast. And so I remember at the time, Chancellor Woodward uh, was the chancellor, and I said, I, I don't know any female ADs, and in my mind, I had to have a female AD as a mentor, and he said, well, you've got some CEOs in Charlotte that are females that will mentor you, Pat Rogers and Dale Halton, and then just go to the NCAA and get the male mentors, and I couldn't have been more blessed to have had two of the best, C.M. Newton. Uh, who was at Kentucky and DeLos Dodds at Texas. They took me under their wing when we hosted the Final Four here in 1994 and became huge advocates uh, for me and, and people that I could rely on when I needed support, needed their help, needed their wisdom, they were there. 
Um, I, I've been very active, and that was one of the things we had not been before I became athletic director, was having someone active in the NCAA or the National Athletic Directors Association. And both of those were things I needed to do because I wasn't really sure what I was doing in those early years. And uh, so I needed the support there. And once you get involved, if you really want to be involved, uh, they'll allow you to do that. So I became a, pr a president of the National Athletic Directors and then heavily involved on NCAA committees. I've been on chair of the championship cabinet. I'm right now on the NCAA council. That term will finish at the end of June. And that's one reason I'm staying through uh, to fulfill those commitments during that time period. But, but it was instrumental for us because you develop relationships with people in the industry that you can call for anything. The networking is probably the most important piece of it. And so that helped us in putting in bids. People knew who we were. If you've served on committees and you're around NCA staff on a regular basis, they know who you are. You develop the trust with them. I think we're leaving it in overall in good shape. One of the things that I think we've done well is we've not just focused on one sport or two sports. We want to have success in all sports. And when I moved, came into the athletic director position, the only sport that had been to postseason play was men's basketball. And it, since then, we've had men's and women's soccer. We've had basketball. We've had uh, track and field, um, and golf. And, and so it's important to us to have a, a strong overall program. And I think the tone has been set for that. We need to catch up on men's basketball. There is no question. We have, we have lagged behind on that. And, and I'm hopeful that the next person can get that going in the right direction. Football, I, I, I will still say we have been in infancy in that. And I'm hopeful that Brad will get it turned around. And I'm confident that he will. Uh, he's made changes in his staff. So I, I think that's, he's made the steps necessary to get it going in the right direction. Uh, she's a great friend to me personally. And uh, I don't think her record could be matched almost anywhere in the country. Uh, it's going to be very hard to replace her, but we're going to get about that business right away. You know, I've always felt that Judy Rose earned the right to, to decide how she was going to leave. And so um, the most important thing I want people to know is that she wasn't pushed, she wasn't encouraged. Uh, she made the decision and she presented it to me. And I think uh, I'm, I, I respect enough about Judy to let her make her own decisions, obviously. And so I think that's the right the right thing. You know, I'd like someone just like Judy Rose. Uh, she can do it all. She's got um, the understanding of collegiate athletics and of coaching because she was one. She understands the NCAA. She understands conferences, television, uh, uh, student athlete welfare. It's a big complicated job and while I understand that a lot of people like to look at um, the wins and losses in a couple of sports, it's a much more uh, uh, expansive set of responsibilities that an athletic director has uh, than just wins and losses. We're going to get there in those sports that people are concerned about, but the thing for me is to have a, a good team player as a member of my cabinet, someone who's thoughtful, uh, ex exercises good judgment, knows how to raise money, works collaboratively with my cabinet and in the conference. So lots of different things go into that decision. Well, I, I was here in the early 90s as the provost, and I remember going to Independence Arena to watch basketball. I remember, remember when the ground was broken on this facility. And then when I returned in 2005, it was a completely different place. And it's been a completely different place since then. So it evolves over time, but you can't ignore the impact of her leadership on making this university's athletic program what it is. Uh, the toughest one to get started was uh, football. And Judy played obviously an instrumental role in making it possible to get that stadium built and to get us moving and to create a great fan experience in a very short period of time. It's one of the best ranked new stadiums in the country. So uh, she has nothing to be um, but proud of what she's done and I'm proud of her. Just about a month ago and uh, we just decided mutually that we would agree on the date of that announcement and how it would be announced and also conversations with her staff and the coaches and students. So uh, I've known for a while but we both said let's let it rest over the holidays and when we get back we'll make, a, we'll make a, an announcement and then move forward. Uh, if there is a question, let me just say about moving forward. I have a conversation with my trustees executive committee this afternoon. I'm going to recommend to them that we use a search consultant, that we issue an RFP with a pretty short fuse on it to get some proposals, and then interview a couple of firms uh, or individuals in the search business. Uh, I'll appoint a search committee. I will chair it. Uh, we'll have maybe seven to ten people, both from within the university and outside, to give us some advice. In the end, I have to make the decision. This is a senior member of my cabinet.
and uh, it's vice chancellor level. So uh, it's a decision I have to make, uh, but I think I can get a lot of good advice and help from a consultant and a search committee.